Now, Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Senator, look at this. You have the deep state. We, we saw what happened in 2020, 51 former intel officials, the FBI pre-bunking the very real laptop that they knew would be leaked. You've got big tech. We know their involvement. Mark Zuckerberg revealed a lot of it. You have a corrupt media mob that is nothing but an extension of their press office. Uh, you've got a Democratic Party that will lie and say anything about any conservative, any Republican to win an election. And this is what Donald Trump and every Republican candidate, including you, are, are up against this, this cycle. How do you combat that? Well, listen, Sean, I think you just went through a very compelling indictment of the disaster, the train wreck that is Kamala Harris's record. The, the one thing is I thought you were a little bit unfair when, when you criticized her phrase, her catchphrase, unburdened by what has been. I mean, that, that phrase is the central motto of her entire campaign. It ought to be the bumper sticker, Kamala Harris, unburdened by what has been, because Kamala's presidential campaign is unburdened by her record, it is unburdened by truth, it is unburdened by reality, it is unburdened by the victims of her policies. Her campaign is unburdened by the 13 servicemen and women that her failures killed in Afghanistan. It is unburdened by the millions of Americans hurting from inflation. It is unburdened by the families that can't afford to pay their bills anymore. It is unburdened by the deaths that her open borders have caused. It is unburdened by the tragic murder of Lake and Riley. It is unburdened by the tragic murder of Rachel Moran. It is unburdened by the tragic murder of Jocelyn Nungary. It is unburdened from any acknowledgement that she is the sitting vice president and Joe Biden is at least ostensibly still the president when he's not comatose on a Delaware beach. Unburdened her, is her catchphrase for lying to the American people because she cannot defend the catastrophic failures of her agenda. And that's the entire Democrat strategy is lie and pretend that, that they don't support the policies that are hurting millions of Americans. And unburdened from having to answer any questions of her own yes. words, stated positions on every issue involving the economy, on illegal immigration, uh, on law and order, on energy, on foreign policy. She's unburdened. She doesn't have to answer questions. 16 minutes and 29 seconds. That's it. And, and I would assume yep. next week that Georgie Stephanopoulos is going to, you know, hand his questions over to David Muir and he will dutifully read them. Well, and what Dana Bash did and CNN did, it, it's not even fair to call that an interview. It was not an interview. It was a campaign commercial. And, and, and it's a worthwhile question. This is something that, 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 that I raised in my podcast verdict with Ted Cruz. How would those interview questions have been different if the, quote, interview was conducted by Corrine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary. Everything Dana Bash said is exactly what Kamala Harris's campaign wanted her to say. It was, Madam Vice President, tell us how you're going to help jobs. Madam Vice President, tell us all the wonderful things you're going to do to secure the border. Madam Vice President, tell us, do you like kittens more or do you like puppies more? And Madam Vice President, <laughs> let me close with showing an image of your grandniece gazing adoringly on you. You are an historic transma transformational figure. Oh, let me clutch, clutch my heart. That's theoretically a journalist. CNN, the, the entire endeavor is, is literally a wholly owned subsidiary of the DNC. And, and it was a complete laughingstock what they did. All right, Senator Ted Cruz, we appreciate you.